Hi everybody, I'm Naufal. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to discuss regarding a very interesting topic that is mumps. So, what is meant by mumps? Mumps is actually an infection that is caused by RNA virus of myxovirus group, mainly affecting the parotid gland. Mumps is a infection caused by RNA virus of myxovirus group and mainly affecting parotid gland. Parotid gland is a salivary gland situated near to the ear. So, it is affecting the parotid gland mainly. So, we can see the definition of mumps. We can define mumps as it is an acute infectious disease caused by RNA virus of myxovirus group characterized by fever and enlargement of parotid gland. Mumps is an acute infectious disease. It is a short term infectious disease caused by RNA virus of myxovirus group characterized by fever and enlargement of the parotid gland. That is regarding the definition of the mumps. Next, we can see regarding the epidemiological features of mumps. So, mainly regarding the epidemiological features, first one is agent. The agent, the causative agent of mumps is myxovirus parotiditis, a RNA virus of myxovirus group. Myxovirus parotiditis, a RNA virus of myxovirus group. This is the causative agent, myxovirus parotiditis. It is a RNA virus coming under myxovirus family. That is the causative agent of mumps. Next, we can see regarding the infective material. The infective material of the mumps is the salivary secretion of the infected person. The salivary secretion of the infected person is the infective material of the mumps. As well as regarding the period of infectivity or regarding the period of communicability is 4 to 6 days before the onset of the clinical features, before the occurrence of the signs and symptoms, before the 4 to 6 days before the onset of signs and symptoms as well as one week or thereafter after the occurrence of signs and symptoms. Before the occurrence of signs and symptoms, it is 4 to 6 days and after the occurrence of signs and symptoms, it will be one week or thereafter. Okay. So, that is regarding the period of communicability. Now, the source of infection from where we will get the mumps. That is a infected case of mumps only. From a infected person of mumps only, it is a source of infection as well as subclinical case. Subclinical case means the disease in the early stage or not showing any signs and symptoms. So, the source of the mumps is a person who is infected with mumps as well as subclinical case. Now, regarding the host factor, it is mainly affecting the age group of 5 to 15. Mumps will affect all the age group, but it is affecting mainly the age group of 5 to 15. It will affect all the age group, but mainly affecting between the age group of 5 to 15 as well as it is affecting the both sex, both the male and female mums will affect. Okay. Next regarding the environmental factors coming under the epidemiological features, mums is occurring in any season, every season we can see this disease, but mainly the number of cases will be high during the winter as well as the spring season. During the winter as well as the spring season, the cases will be more. But you can see this disease in all seasons. Now, next one is regarding the mode of transmission. Regarding the mode of transmission, that is how this disease is spread from one person to another person. 
that is mainly through the droplet infection as well as direct contact with the infected person mainly through the droplet infection that is when a infected person whenever he is coughing or through sneezing or through talking through the drops it will spread from one person to another person as well as direct contact with the infected person also may get mumps okay next we can see regarding the incubation period of the mumps normally the incubation period of mumps is 2 to 3 week 2 to 3 week is the incubation period of mumps but the average days is 14 to 18 days 14 to 18 days is the average incubation period of mumps next we can see regarding the clinical features that is the signs and symptoms of the mumps first one is sudden onset of fever next one is earache headache and body ache so here ache will be there headache will be there and body ache will be there next one is enlargement of one or both parotid gland next one is difficulty in opening mouth next one is tenderness in parotid region last one is malaise these are the clinical features of the mumps sudden onset of the fever suddenly you can see fever and earache will be there headache as well as body ache three aches you have to keep it in mind and enlargement of one or both the parotid gland will be enlarged and difficulty in opening the mouth the patient will say it will be very difficult to open the mouth as well as tenderness in the parotid region you can see as well as malaise malaise is the feeling of discomfort or a feeling of illness that is the clinical features next we can see regarding the complications of mumps what are the complications of mumps first one is oophoritis second one is myocarditis and last one is orchitis oophoritis myocarditis and orchitis so oophoritis means it is the inflammation of one or both ovary one or both ovary it is the inflammation of the ovary next Myocarditis. Myocardium is the muscle layer of the heart. So, myocarditis means it is the inflammation of the myocardium. And last one is orchitis. Orchitis means it is the inflammation of one or both testicle. That is one or both the testis. Inflammation of the testis is the orchitis. These are the main complications of mumps. Next, we can see regarding the diagnostic measures of mumps how to diagnose mumps mainly through history collection as well as through physical examination during physical examination the swollen glands the enlarged gland is a good evidence to diagnose the mumps as well as through blood test also we can confirm mumps next we can see regarding the treatment of mumps how to treat the mumps actually there is no specific treatment for the mumps so we are giving analgesics to get the relief from the pain as well as providing cold compression we have to provide cold compression on the swollen glands to get the relief and advise the patient to drink plenty of water and advise them to take rest this is the main treatment for the mumps next we can see regarding the prevention and control how to prevent mumps and how to control mumps regarding the prevention mumps can be prevented through vaccine mumps can be prevented through vaccine we have to give 0.5 ml live attenuated mumps vaccine at the age of one year above after one year we have to give 0.5 ml mumps vaccine either subcutaneously or intramuscular you can give mumps vaccine after one year first dose as well as the second dose can be given at four to six year the age is between four to six year second dose you can give so the mumps vaccine you can give with the combination of mmr that is with the mumps measles rubella vaccine as a combined form also you can give the mumps vaccine through vaccine we can prevent mumps now regarding the control the control of the mumps is 
difficult because before the onset of the symptom itself mumps is a infective disease anyway we have to control the mumps so what we have to do is we have to isolate the infected person until the clinical features disappear until the clinical features subsides we have to isolate the infected person as well as we have to disinfect the things that is used by the patient we have to disinfect the things used by the patient and the last one is the contact the person who had contact with the infected person should be kept under observation that's all regarding mums we will meet soon with another video till that time thank you and goodbye